Hi, I'm Nathan Wallach, Professor of Digital Arts at Stetson University. With me today is my co-author, Grace McElroy, who recently completed her undergraduate degree with a double major in Digital Arts and Education. Uh, we're here presenting at ICMC uh, about designing 3D printed spectrograms for blind students. On the slide in front of you is, are the Young Sound Seekers, uh, a group of young people who are themselves blind and partially sighted, along with some of their chaperones. Um, this program was started in 2020 uh, with a grant secured from the National Park Service. It's a joint program uh, that's uh, run by Stetson University and Atlantic Center for the Arts, which some of you may be familiar with through their uh, artistic residency programs that they host in Florida. Uh, we host monthly excursions to Canaveral National Seashore and other public lands uh, and we teach them lessons about field recording uh, as well as uh, lessons about sound and soundscape um, since that's primarily how they experience public lands. Uh, the idea being that we want to create welcoming and inclusive experiences for a population that might be underserved by the national parks. In creating these lessons, I draw on a number of things that I would present normally in my college courses, but adapting it to um, our, our younger audience and also a visually impaired audience. Um, and there are certain concepts that are easier presented through visualizations in the electronic music or sound art classroom. Um, you could teach these things by sound alone, but uh, the ability to visualize them allows you to step outside the moment by moment experience of sound. Uh, and review things with your eyes that you might have missed with your ears when they went by so quickly. One example of those is uh, what I have on, on the screen now, a spectrogram, right? Uh, we're used to looking at these spectrograms where we have time expressed on the x-axis from left to right, uh, and I've got 30 seconds of time here on this slide. Uh, I've got uh, frequency on the y-axis from the bottom of the slide to the top of the slide, and I've got approximately 8,000 hertz uh, worth of frequency. Uh, existing on this, uh, this spectrogram here. Uh, and then intensity is noted uh, using color. Uh, and so in, on this spectrogram, uh, reds are more intense sections of the sound than the blues and purples, with the most intense sounds being uh, denoted in yellows and whites. Um, uh, so we, we thought that these were useful in terms of teaching basic lessons about sound, but obviously they needed to be adapted to a visually impaired audience. And so we hit upon the idea of potentially 3D printing these sounds and, and creating uh, a set of these that would allow us to teach basic concepts. To be clear, we're not the first to 3D print uh, spectrograms. Uh, you can see the lit review in our paper, uh, which is available online and in the, in the proceedings. Um, but we are the first to design a set of these as uh, a teaching tool, a teach, as teaching aids, uh, instead of just as an artistic uh, output or as um, uh, for other purposes. So I'm going to hand it over to my co-author, Grace McElroy, who's going to talk a little bit about the design and testing phases of the project. Thank you, Dr. Wallach. So we're going to be talking about several features of the models that underwent different changes throughout the design process. Um, our first round of models are what we call flat models, otherwise more familiar to you as waveform view. Um, you can see the pictures of these. It's the top one. It's very long and green. And then the one right above the word design, it is yellow. Those are our flat models. They were initially easiest to print, but we also felt they were somewhat inadequate in showing the patterns and depicting the patterns that we were trying to talk about to our students. So then we moved on to spectrograms. Um, these did take longer to print so because of the complexity of the surface. So then we decided to make a standard size of five and a half inches or 13.7 centimeters to 30 seconds of audio. This way we weren't cramming a bunch of audio into such a small piece, we could spread it out. And this also was a benefit because it's easier for you to run your fingers in between all the peaks when it's more spread out like that. Um, the other feature that underwent major changes um, you can see it's kind of at the top. There's three models right up, stacked on top of each other. They are red, orange, and yellow. We went through labeling designs. So we use 3dprintedsound.com to create these models. And with this website, we were able to raise the bottom of the models and create like a blank section. 
at the bottom. So initially we started just putting text on there and it was sunken into the model. Then our second round, we had text extruding out from the model. And then our last round, we were able to print out actually braille. Um, I do want to mention again, 3dprintedsound.com, which should be in the upper right picture. You can see it's of a website, was an invaluable tool and it, it enabled us to really crucially take an audio like wave file and then convert it into an SDL file, which is what 3D printers use and read. So now let's move on to testing. So we needed to send our models to someone to evaluate them before we were able to start using them with our students. So we found Miss Marie, who is actually a consultant for different companies, evaluating the accessibility of different devices and technologies and models and such. And she's visually impaired herself, so this was perfect. She gave us three main pieces of feedback to consider. First, some of the models, the peaks, were really fragile and just kind of broke off, which is not at all good for a tactile model. So we needed to consider what type of plastic we were printing with. Second, she also advised us that we might want to print in specific colors that are easier for some people with visual impairments to see, such as red and yellow. And then lastly, and I would say most importantly, she also told us that it was difficult to orient the model just based on words alone and that there really wasn't much there to help her with. So that gave us the idea of putting a small symbol on the front of the model to help orient it. So we have an arrow in the lower left corner and that goes in your left palm so that time is reading from left to right. Now I'll hand it back to you, Dr. Wallach. Thanks, Grace. And I really do need to credit Grace for uh, taking the lead on the, this iterative design process of uh, trying out a lot of different sizes and shapes and figuring out what works and what would be best for a, a standardized format so that we had consistent sizes and shapes for the models. Um, I then took that information and worked on a lesson that would allow me to teach kind of a, an adapted and simplified version of a vocabulary that's used for reduced listening. Uh, things like duration, pitch, pattern, uh, speed, timbre. Um, the idea being that we could teach these vocabulary to the, the, the kids and young sound seekers uh, and they'd be able to use them uh, when discussing differences or features of specific sounds in the natural soundscape. So imagine you're out listening to uh, a bird and uh, you can discuss whether that's uh, its call bird A and bird B have a difference of uh, duration or is there a difference of pitch in their voices or is there a difference in the, the pattern that they're creating uh, through their vocalizations. Uh, and so it's a really uh, a good to have a shorthand of, of vocabulary to be able to describe these differences. So I designed a series of sound uh, files that I then turned into three, these 3D printed spectrogram models uh, to explain some of these concepts. And I'm going to talk a little bit about them while uh, Grace shows them to you uh, in the camera. So uh, the duration intensity is the first model. Uh, and you can see in this one, uh, the duration uh, rises, uh, the, the duration changes between three groupings, uh, as well as the intensity rises within each grouping. So you can get an increasing and decreasing uh, mm -hmm. intensity. And it mm -hmm. sounds like this. Next up, we have the pitch duration model. And here we have uh, a, a short, medium, long duration pattern that uh, repeats three times uh, in, on the same musical pitch, but in three different octaves. Um, and this uh, allows us to talk about the, the, the rising pitch and how that changes on the, the spectrogram. Uh, but also, uh, because we used uh, linear frequency, it makes the the, the nonlinearity of octaves really obvious in the spectrogram. Uh, the, they end up being uh, much farther apart between the second and third set than they are between the first and the, the second set. And it sounds like this.
Next, we have a model dedicated to timbre. Uh, and as many would say, uh, timbre is a multidimensional uh, quality of sound. Uh, we focused in on the difference between pitched and noisy sounds. Um, and so uh, built a model that was designed uh, to move between a, an oscillator and a white noise generator so that they, they could uh, feel the difference between uh, those pitched uh, timbres that are, are consistent and the pitch that they're sounding uh, and those timbres that are, are noisy and, and kind of extend up through the frequency spectrum. And it sounds like this. Our fourth model in the collection uh, deals with pattern and speed, um, two uh, features that we, we uh, explain really only apply to sounds that repeat, right? Um, so when sounds are repeating, they can have a pattern. When sounds are repeating, they can have a speed to them. Uh, and so we built a model that is kind of oscillating between two pitches uh, in, a, in a high, low, high pattern, uh, but then it increases speed and decreases speed, and it sounds like this. The final model in the collection is the, the one that uh, kind of brings it all together and it does so by actually using a field recording that was captured at Canaveral National Seashore. Uh, it, it, it contains a, a, the sound of an owl hooting, uh, the sound of a frog croaking, and then also uh, crickets striating. Uh, and so the owl ends up showing up in the front uh, left-hand corner, uh, some quick uh, hoots uh, at the beginning of the sound. The crickets are a form of kind of wall at the, the top because their, their striations are so fast in their re repetition, it just kind of blends together into this, this, this wall on the spectrogram. Uh, and then in the right half of the spectrogram, you've got the frog croaking, uh, which because its its croak is a little noisier than the owl, it, it forms a kind of ridge that moves from front to back on the spectrogram, uh, which helps kind of convey kind of the diff again, the differences between pitched and noisy sounds. And it sounds like this. So in addition to us using this collection, we've placed the entire thing up on GitHub. Um, on GitHub, you can click into individual folders for each model. Uh, you'll find there the original sound file that was uh, synthesized and then turned into a 3D printed model. You can click on the and download the STL file, which should allow you, if you have a 3D printer, to print it yourself. Uh, so you have your own copy of these models. Uh, we've also included a, a photo uh, for reference, uh, as well as a text description for our visually impaired uh, users so that they can uh, have a way to guide their, their, their exploration of the 3D printed models. We'd like to take a moment to thank our wonderful partners and sponsors throughout this program. First and foremost, the National Park Service Night Skies and Natural Sounds Division, as well as Stetson University and the Innovation Lab, because that's where we printed our models at and the Atlantic Center for the Arts, and the Conklin Davis Center for the Visually Impaired. Don't forget to check out youngsoundseekers.org and feel free to message us with any questions or queries you have. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just conclude by saying thank you to ICMC uh, for programming our paper and giving us the opportunity to share this project. I hope it's useful to other people in their teaching. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see where the conversation goes from here as people get in touch with us uh, using these materials. Uh, hopefully we can build this, uh, build this collection out and have a nice robust set of uh, 3D printable spectrograms for teaching about basic sound concepts. Thank you.